In order to examine the ways the military, as well as a constellation of other factors, is mashed into situated practices, I return to the concept of kibush. Discussing this concept in a study of the Israeli soldier, Ruben Gall argues that the prevalence of gibush is not just from the military. Above all, it reflects educational and societal values in Israel, not only in the kibbutz, but also in cities and townships. Critically, he turns to the Israeli school system as a key site where gibush is promoted, and indeed it is common to hear the phrase kita megubeshet, or cohesive class. In this manner, we can begin to glimpse the ways that the military is mashed into a constellation of institutional, national, and cultural ecologies. To examine this complex mashing, I turn to an English teacher training program at a college seminar hakipuzim located in the northern district of Ramad Aviv. It is worthwhile noting that most of the students in this program have served in the military, and in fact many were first exposed to teaching as trainers in the army. For this reason, and for others, the military serves as a powerful socializing force mashed into everyday classroom activities. Additionally, we find evidence of other types of mashing, pointing to the ways the military is bound up in wider cultural ecologies. This includes the name of the college itself, Seminar HaKibbutzim, indexing the socialist ideals of the kibbutz. One finds further mashing on a sign posted outside the gated entrance to the college with the slogan that reads, a symbol or sign that you are exceptional. This language points to the infiltration of American ideologies. Believe in yourself, you are the best. Despite this influence, the ideals of the collective are still alive and well. To examine this mashing, we turn to a scene in a writing classroom at the college. The scene here is a final in-class essay for a composition course taken by a cohort of students. This in-class writing assignment was designed in response, at least in part, to plagiarism at the school, as in-class writing ensured that the students did their own work. This rationale highlights the social nature of the writing activities and ways they were deeply bound up in kibush. The in-class mini-research paper, as it was called, was the culmination of the semester in which the students had prepared materials to write in response to a prompt provided the day of class. Students then composed with their notes, research articles, textbooks, highlighters, pencils, pens, paper, electronic dictionaries, whiteout, and other materials. These objects all form part of what Clay Spinuzzi calls a genre ecology. These ecologies were furthermore mashed into wider national and global ecologies with connections to the military. Turning to the in-class writing, I will examine the ways that these ecologies were mashed into gibush, and then turn more explicitly to the ways that the military is woven into this process. Key to these interactions is the rapid and multi-directional nature of the exchanges mediating the activity. In this particular scene, we find four students sitting in a row, with the student closest to the camera, Tal, engaged in the process of writing her exam. In the opening scene, for instance, we find Hen reaching over to Tal three times to take an eraser, marker, and finally, electronic dictionary, as Hen repeatedly reaches across to Tal. This reaching across signifies not only the collective sense of ownership over the objects, but also the sense of shared personal space. These exchanges are furthermore reciprocal and multi-directional, as we see Tao reach over for an eraser from Hen and then return it. The speed with which these actions occur is important, as it reinforces the continual sense of contact amongst the students, contributing to kibush. There are furthermore not only physical exchanges, but also verbal ones, as we see here, and Sven reaches over to take an eraser, while Tal, in return, turns to Hen to make a side comment. Once again, the positioning of objects is also significant. Here, the dictionary is placed in the middle of the two women, so in fact, we are not able to tell to whom the dictionary belongs. 
The multi-directional nature of the exchanges furthermore extends to other students. Here, Ren takes a paper dictionary from a deer to her right, while Chao simultaneously takes an electronic dictionary from Ren. These multiple points of exchange and contact reinforce the sense of gibouche in the classroom. There are also written exchanges. In this case, Tao takes Ren's pen and writes on her paper. We can see the sense of shared ownership here, as Tao in essence appropriates Ren's materials. Gesture, gaze, and bodily positioning are also critical. Here, Ren looks at Tao. Then, Tao makes a gesture towards Ren, and then back towards herself, pointing to the connections between them. We again see Tao writing on Ren's paper, and then returning an electronic dictionary. We can finally see the wide extent and range of these exchanges, both official and unofficial, with the passing of a cake moving from person to person. This is similar to the way that discourse itself functions, and it is useful here to draw on Bakhtin's concept of an utterance as a chain in the link of speech communication. In this manner, we can see the ways that these exchanges shape the flow or recontextualization of discourse, as well as the connections amongst the student body. Significantly, Tal turns towards the camera frame to offer me a piece of cake, and in this way, I myself, as a participant observer, am brought into the frame and made part of the gibouche. In this manner, we can see the ways that wider ideologies are mashed into everyday literacy practices.